I'm here in the gym at Albertus Magnus College where I teach to talk to you about tennis elbow, the topic for my January column. At the very outset, I have to tell you, always seek professional medical help if you even suspect that you have tennis elbow. The only person who can diagnose and treat tennis elbow effectively is your physician. Having said that, let's talk a little bit about what tennis elbow might be. It really is tendonitis. And there are really two areas that players tend to get tennis elbow. If you're experiencing pain on the elbow itself, that's the most common form. The second most common form is really where your arm has the crease kind of above the elbow. Sometimes people will have discomfort in this area. And though it may not specifically be tennis elbow as you normally know it, I consider it to be one of the forms of tennis elbow. From my experience, the kind of tennis elbow that is located here, right at the bottom of the elbow itself, is generally associated with one of several strokes. The forehand, the serve with a continental grip, forehand volleys, and perhaps the overhead smash. The kind of tennis elbow that is normally associated with the upper arm in the crease, in my experience, is caused by people who hit, particularly with a continental grip, a one-hand backhand, backhand volleys, if you're serving with a full eastern backhand grip, sometimes you'll find discomfort on that crease area as a result of mishits or improper technique associated with that particular stroke. And of course, again, depending on how you hit the overhead smash, that can be the culprit as well. In this month's column, I try to present one cause of tennis elbow. Now, there are many. And I go through a list of things that can cause tennis elbow. But given my videotape analysis, I generally will videotape myself and other players using a video camcorder, slow it down and analyze it carefully. I notice that there is a typical flaw that can occur that will cause tennis elbow, or at least be one of the causes of tennis elbow. And I call it the racket forward contact point. By that I mean, if you are hitting, let's say, a forehand properly, when you make contact with the ball, the racket head itself will be a little bit behind the wrist. And the same is true with, let's say, a one-hand backhand. The racket itself will be either parallel or a little bit behind the wrist. Given lighter rackets and a lot of other factors that come to play that I describe in my column, Sometimes people will actually hit with the racket slightly in front of the wrist, as I'm doing right now. I'm going to exaggerate what I'm talking about. No one really hits the ball this way. But even a slight variation where the racket head is in front of the wrist can actually cause tennis elbow, or at least that's my theory. In my column, I talk about a little test that you can do that will help you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to demonstrate it using one of the basket posts to illustrate what I'm talking about. In my January column, I talk about a little test that hopefully will illustrate some of the situation that can occur when you use the forward racket contact point. I'm going to use the basket post here in the gym, but this could be done in your door jam at home. I'm going to start with the forehand, and I'm going to make sure that that racket is behind my wrist. As you can see from this point of view, it is. I'm going to come up, and I'm going to push against this post. And if you really push hard, there's no pain. And in fact, you feel very, very strong with that racket head behind your wrist. Now I'm going to take an exaggerated viewpoint and put the racket in front of my wrist. Using that same grip, I'm going to push forward. I haven't the strength, and I'll probably feel some discomfort. And if you've got tennis elbow, don't push too hard on this because, in fact, you'll probably aggravate the situation. On the backhand wing, the same is true if you use a one-hand backhand. I'm going to put this racket behind my wrist, as is the case right now, and I'm going to push up against this post. I can push very hard with an awful lot of pressure and no pain or discomfort. If, however, I use that same grip and I put the wrist and racket head in front of the wrist and push against it. I don't have the strength, and now I'm really feeling a little bit of discomfort in that crease area on my forearm. I think, in fact, people who hit the two-hand backhand rarely end up with the 
crease form of tennis elbow because having two hands on the racket certainly can make a difference. If you hit a two-hand forehand, well, you probably have the same benefit. My point is you can actually feel which of these sides is the problem and you can actually see for yourself that having that racket head behind the wrist at the moment of impact on either wing is critically important when you're using only one hand to hit the ball. So what do you do if you have tennis elbow, have gone to your physician or healthcare professional, received treatment and you're feeling better and you don't want to get it again? Well, I give a list of various things to consider as you start rehabbing and coming back to the game. But if you're trying to avoid what I consider to be one of the primary causes of tennis elbow, the forward racket situation, there are some things that you can do. One, I would recommend that you go to a wall or a backboard and practice hitting strokes lightly as you get back into the game. Only this time, try your best to hit with the ball coming a little bit later than you normally would like. By that I mean you make contact with the ball just a fraction of a second later than you normally would. As you take the racket back, whether it be forehand or backhand, bend the wrist back so that the racket head is behind the wrist as you approach the ball. And that's true on either wing. Second, I would recommend that you, if you're having problem with the forehand, open the stance a little bit more face the net just a little bit more. Automatically, this will end up having you hit the ball more likely with the proper contact point. However, if you hit a one-hand backhand, you're probably going to benefit by closing the stance and standing more sideways to the actual net. And in doing that, once again, what you'll find is that the racket is behind your wrist ever so slightly when you make contact. The point is, is you're trying to retrain your body so that you don't end up hitting with the racket in front of the wrist at the moment of contact. Now why this happens I discuss in my column and I hope that you'll read it. But I honestly believe that you can address tennis elbow in an effective way. And I think that my theory about why tennis elbow may come when everything else is the same, there's nothing different in your game, there's no noticeable, if you will, injury or stroke that caused it. More often than not, it's my experience that it's this racket forward problem that can cause the situation. So hopefully, with proper medical care, some attention to detail in your game, reading my column and benefiting from some of the information that others have provided about tennis elbow, you can end up resolving this issue and becoming the tennis overdog you were meant to be. Thanks for watching.